Welcome back, Source Nation. Now here's your host, Kathy B. Welcome back, Source Nation. Welcome back. You're listening live right here on the Ladies' Lounge. I am your host, Kathy B. We have about an hour before we lose the live feed. Telephone number to reach us tonight is 619-924-0933. Again, 619-924-0933. Well, you guys, I'm telling you, I'm so excited because we are uh, doing another book series where I had the opportunity to really begin to speak to some wonderful and amazing women that are doing some great things within their cities as well as their communities. And the book that we're going to be speaking from and the dynamic women that are coming into the studio are part of a great collaboration. The name of the book is Women Inspiring Nations. Of course, you all have had the opportunity in my first hour to hear from a wonderful and amazing young lady, Adrian Dawkins. And now that we're here in the second hour, I'm going to be speaking with Ladrine Peterson. Now, um, if you're just tuning in, let me give you guys a little bit of information about uh, Women Inspiring Nations and why this book is coming to fruition and taking place and beginning to give us great information on this amazing journey that these women are sharing with us. Now, this book is designed to feature women who are using their gifts for the greater good, taking their gifts beyond the boundaries of their own zip code and being intentional about inspiring others by sharing their story, their lessons, and their knowledge. Now, each of them are contributing authors will share their stories about how they discovered their unique gifts or calling in spite of life's distractions, what challenges they may face along the way, and walking into their greatness. Now, how they found the drive and focus to commit to process, the most pivotal lessons that they've learned, what fears they had to face, and how they are now beginning to use their gifts to impact and inspire. I love it. Well, I am not going to have this young lady waiting any longer because I am so excited to have her here in the studio with me. I am going to be speaking with Miss Ladrine Peterson. Ladrine, hello, and welcome to the Ladies' Lounge. How are you this evening? Hello, how are you? I'm doing just well, and yourself? I am wonderful, excited to have you here in the lounge with me and definitely excited to hear about your amazing journey. Now, you know, Ladrine, I really hadn't had the opportunity to really begin to share you with the ladies here in the lounge and definitely the Source Nation family. But if you will, please, if you could take a moment to introduce yourself, that would be great, and we'll jump into the conversation from there. Sure. My name is LaDreen Peterson, and I am the CEO and career and business strategist of Delivering on Ideas and Thoughts. Do it. So in that capacity, I provide assistance and resources with individuals who are looking to fulfill their dreams. I love it. I do, I do. All right. Well, LaDreen, if you will, please. Of course, you know, um, I mentioned to the ladies here in the lounge and and the Source Nation family that you're part of an amazing collaboration, 19 women, I do believe, that are part of Women Inspiring uh, Nations. Talk to us a little bit, if you will. Why was it so important to begin to share your journey with everyone that are listening as well as reading the book? Yes. So, For me, it goes directly to the title of my chapter. And the title of my chapter is Don't Just Dream Your Dream, Do It. And for me, I wanted to let everyone know that there is something in dreaming, and it's a good feeling in that dreaming part of it. But if you let a dream sit, nothing happens to it. So I inspire and encourage people to do it. And by do it, I mean I break it up into four different points. So do it, D-O-I-T. D is by being determined. O is by being obedient. I is by being intentional. And T is by being transparent. Mm. I love that. I love that. Now, with that being said, The fact that you had a dream and you now know that the dream, you have to do it. Talk to 
talk to us a little bit about that because what we talk about here on the Ladies' Lounge um, is about passion and purpose. And as we know, as, as women, especially if we're wives and we're mothers, we tend to put our dreams aside so we can uh, really begin to focus and fulfill that role. And a lot of us now have literally come into the, the fold of transitioning, but we don't know how to do that. What are your thoughts about that, about having your dreams and working it to where it now can become to fruition? Oh, so so that's a good question, and that's that's real deep. So for me, so let's go back a little bit. So for me, I was born a dreamer. However, mm-hmm. I encountered some distractions along the way that kind of like shook my faith a little bit. And and by that I mean, as a child, my family poured into me and praised me and gave me the foundation so that I can have a perspective of a positive and bright destiny. But on the other hand, I live in a brutal part of the southeast quadrant of Washington, D.C., and what was portrayed on the news, it spoke failure and and devastation into me and my friends. So as we looked Mm -hmm. at the news and tried to figure out things, it was like, we might as well live and have fun for today because all roads lead to devastation. But then I will always go back to my foundation, and that goes back into what my mother, my family members, and my teachers spoke into me, and they spoke success into me. And so from that standpoint, I realized that I could make it and I could do it, but I also realized that in order for me to do so, it was in order it was for me to make the right decisions in life, to make sure and that's where that I comes in. I saw when I mentioned I, I said intentional. We have choices that we can make despite all the odds that come against us and all of the the distractions that we're faced with, we have choices that we can make. And so at a young age I began to think big, and I began to think about my future and how I wanted to change what was portrayed or what was stated, how someone from Southeast would be. And I began to pour directly into myself. So as a young girl, I didn't really know exactly what was going on, but I knew, like, my mindset was different from those who were around me. And so the biggest thing for me was my faith. So as I grew along, I began to go to church and more because I was raised in church, but Bible study and all of the different activities, I began to really, really, really get engulfed in that. And with my faith, it built, and I knew that things started happening to me. And, and again, I'm telling you, this was as a young child, and I was like, oh, I'm getting blessed. I'm getting blessed. If those are the words mm-hmm. that you hear in church. And then later on in life, I realized that it was favor. I realized it was favor, but not only favor, like, just granted to me, it was granted to me so that I can inspire and help others to realize that they could, too, fulfill their dreams. Mm -hmm. I love that. I love that. And I find that that is very important. I love the fact that you realized that early on. You realized the fact that you had something, and what that something was was to to uh, impact others later on down the line. What I, I share with um, the ladies here in the lounge is the fact that when you have a dream, just as I said before, um, it's not the time for you to set it aside, especially if you know that, like I said, you you may um, be a mother, you may be be a wife, you still can have that dream. Not only that, you still can take part in that dream. It's really based upon, you know, the, the planning of it. What are your thoughts about that? Putting your dreams aside, of course, 
because you, you may have, just as you said, you had life distractions, but there may be other obligations. But that doesn't necessarily mean that you can't have what you've been dreaming. What are your thoughts about that? So that directly speaks to my life. I had my child at the age of 19. So mind you, all of these things that I just told you have spoken life into me despite everything that went on. So I had my daughter at the age of 19. And in our neighborhood, that was fine. I graduated from high school, so woo-woo for me because others had – had children while they were in school, but it still didn't sit well with me. So that was a pivotal point in my life, the pivotal point in my life where I knew that not only was I living and was I building a future for myself, but I was also building it for my child. So that could have been a a moment where I decided to give up because 19, I was still considered a teenager. I had not yet turned 20. So that was the teenage pregnancy. And there were so many statistics and so many negative components around that. But I take you back to that because that was the point, very pivotal for me, where I was like, no, I really need to do this. So I, as a, as, as a parent of a young daughter, I had to figure out and I had to balance out the different things that I would do. So for me, no more partying. I could have limited it because I had a structure where my mom, where I lived with my mom. And at that time, um, my daughter's father, and who became my husband, we were not married at that time. But I chose mm-hmm. to intentionally, and that's where that I comes from, intentional. And I began to write down my goals way back then. I know people are doing it now, and we're having vision boards, but I promise you, I started this personally all the way back in the day. And I will write my goals out every year, and I began to develop pathways to get to my goals because when I first started, I would go and try to jump and reach to my goal, and I kept falling, <laughs> setting myself fall back. And I would be like, oh, my God, and then doubt would come in. But I learned to break it down, put it in increments, break it down, and I was able to achieve. And the more that I achieved, I achieved more. I went on. um, I worked for the bank, but then I started working for the federal government at the lowest grade on the totem pole. They situated me in a human resources management office. And then from that, I used to catch public transportation. So I was like, okay, this is my time because when I got home, it was mommy duty and all the other duties. So I began to take home large manuals, HR manuals, and I began to read them on my 45-minute commute. And then after that, a light bulb came off. It just blew up, and it was like you can master this. And I began to be called upon as a young young, lower-level person to explain to the public because the higher-graded personnel specialists, they were not getting through the public. The public will be like, it's so hard to understand the federal government hiring process. And then when I showed them how to break it down, I began to be placed in large meetings in so many other places. But then that's how I began to activate my life by breaking it down, because I said, okay, if I can break it down, and these people who've never had any experience and always a group of them complained about the complexity of it, that's the answer. That's the answer. And that's the way that I began to carry out everything that I do and that I put energy into in my life, because nothing Mm -hmm. is by accident. So everything that came about, from the HR component, but see, from there, I began, I went on to college, and I got my associate's degree. I learned the training and how to get your training paid for. So I began to take classes that would directly relate to my job. So then, from my associate's degree, I got them to pay for my bachelor's degree. 
Then I got them to pay for a master's degree in, with an emphasis in human resources management. By this time, I moved up to be a manager, and guess what? I got them to pay for another master's degree with an, mm-hmm. with an, it, for business. So all of this, I did not take away from my daughter. My daughter was still able to get her time. So this was, remember, I talked about this 45-minute commute where it was my time. So I could have took that time to relax my mind or to do other things, but instead I fed my mind. I fed Mm -hmm. my mind because I saw my ultimate goal. So my message to your audience is dream big. I mean crazy, crazy big. But in order for you to realistically get to it, have a mindset and an understanding of breaking it up into chunks. That way you won't become overwhelmed. And as you begin to make it onto one one part or one part of your pathway, you'll get so excited with that check mark that you will inspire yourself. And then you'll begin to see yourself inspiring other people. And then when you start doing everything intentionally, you'll see it all come together and it will be effortlessly, effortlessly. I love that. I love that. Source Nation and the Ladies in the Lounge, we are speaking with Ms. Ladreen Peterson, and she's given us some great information in reference to her contribution in the book, Women um, in Nations. We are talking about your journey, um, Ladreen. Ladreen, I'm sorry. And mm-hmm. the fact is is that you have you've mentioned some great things. I want to touch base on having a plan or making a plan in essence to your dreams because sometimes we tend to 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 be all over the place so when you make the plan how specific does it need to be what are your thoughts on that on on that does it need to be specific so honestly for me i don't put any one person in a box when i meet with my clients and I coach them whether or not it's for a career or for a mm-hmm. business venture. I meet my clients where they are. Everybody does not think alike, and everyone does not operate alike. So, therefore, there is not a one size fit all answer or process for any group of individuals. It's all based on where the person is. So I can look mm-hmm. at it, and I'll go with the two furthest ends of the spectrum. So for someone who does not have it all planned and organized, for them I offer an opportunity to write out all of your stuff. It may take us a minute um, longer to get there, but you have to come at some point organize your stuff. But you can start from being all over to the place, and I use an exercise that I call 1 to 100. 1 to okay. 100. And that is write down all of your stuff that you want to do. Write it in the language that you write it. It doesn't have to be pretty or anything. And I provide them columns such as timeline and the cost of. So a lot of business perspectives and business columns that go into it to help them just put their ideas down because if you force someone into a pattern that doesn't fit with their communication style and doesn't fit with their operation style, you are going to lose them. And my goal is not to lose any dreams. My goal mm-hmm. is to everyone that I work with that let uh, help them to fulfill their goals. So that's someone who's all over the place, and that's okay. That's okay that 1 to 100 helps them. And then from that perspective, I will go through and coach them through and provide consultation to help them narrow it down and put a realistic time frames on it And because I pull in my project management skills and I help them manage this like a project, which will break it down, as I mentioned before, into increments, and it will make it not seem so much of all over the place because we will – organized dysfunction. We will get it organized. And then with the further <laughs> end of it, the further mm-hmm. end of it, 
for people who are ready and people who have that aspect of, okay, I'm organized. We can relate very well because that's my style. So for me, I write my goals out every year. However, I also go back and visit them, and I break it down into chunks. I have quarterly goals, and I have monthly goals. In order to meet my monthly goals, I break it down into weekly goals. And in order to meet my weekly goals, I break it down into daily goals and hourly goals, minutes. I haven't got down to seconds, but, hey, that's the way that I operate. And that's mm-hmm. the way that I operate. So I have goals written out so far years. And one of the things that helped me with that is being an HR, a human resources specialist. A lot of times when I'm interviewing candidates, what's the popular question that you get? What are your goals? And I don't just ask mm-hmm. people their goals because I want to know, how, does this job fit you? Not only would you right. fit this job. So I ask them for their short-term, mid-term, and long-range goals. And that's how I operate my life. And I have been been doing so for years. So for those who are structured and pretty much have their goals and understanding and know their purpose and know how to align their purpose with their passion, that's an easy that's a that's an easy process for me. An easy process. But you have to not put people in a box and you have to allow people to know that where they are, their indecisiveness or their ability to speak out in an elevated pitch of what they want to do and, and their mission, it's all of it is good. All of it mm-hmm. is still good. It's just a matter of meeting people where they are. And for the people who are on that earlier spectrum all over the place, they need to be careful of who they are around because when you are in that situation, you will get shy or you will lose confidence if someone that you're speaking to does not understand things being all over the place, if someone that you're speaking to is looking for that organized function. But all of our dreams are important. It doesn't matter what stage you are in your life. All of our dreams are just as important and just as equivalent. Yes, I love that. I love that. And, Ladreen, let's talk about some of the things that you are putting in place as you are meeting um, brand-new clients and and for the ones that um, have picked up the book and are very interested in what you have contributed Talk to us a little bit about some of the things that you're putting in place for the people that are wanting some assistance from you, especially trying to really understand how to um, execute a dream or a passion that they've always had and wanted but just don't know how. What are some of the things that you do? Sure. So one is so uh, I have a few things that are coming up, and I'm so excited, so excuse my excitement as it comes out in my voice. But, um, of course, in January, we're hitting off with our book launch, but I already have things that are lined up that are going to align with this book and my chapter. So, again, the title of my chapter is Don't Just Dream Your Dream, Do It. So it comes out and it launches in January. The most popular things that people do in January is a vision board party. So I am actually a speaker and a panelist at a vision board paint party. And my presentation and my information directly aligns to my book. So my Mm -hmm. presentation is called Don't Just Dream Your Dream, Do It. So what I have created was, just take it from what I did and the successes and what I have learned along the way, and I have put this into a packet. So I cannot wait to get in front of this audience and share with them this information and offer them the tools to break down their dreams and how to reach their objectives. And the documentation, the way that it's prepared, is prepared for 
both of the groups of people that we put on both ends of the stress the spectrum. It includes that one to one hundred activity worksheet as well as organized pieces where it helps you to go in and break your activities down from the mm-hmm. quarter, the month, the week and the year. So that's one thing. And in February, I haven't even released it yet, but I just received my confirmation of payment. But I'm going to do a getaway retreat. So I rented a four bedroom house. And I'm okay. going to take a small number of entrepreneurs and work with them through a series of modules to help them from where they are, from where they are. They're very essential pieces to really get you out and push you to do it. And that's the name of my business, do it. So don't just talk about it, do it. So through this mm-hmm. weekend, we're going to walk away with some tangible activities and events that takes people closer to their goals. And in addition to that, I'm going to offer a program, and it's going to allow for weekly meetings where we touch upon, and then a component of it is going to offer them individual time so that I can help them with their marketing strategies or any other piece if it's just understanding their purpose or um, getting the concept of their target product, whatever it is, they will have the opportunity to do it on the side. Um, And I have so many collaborations because I have a nonprofit organization, and through that I put on empowerment seminars. Just this Mm -hmm. Saturday, um, a couple weeks ago, we had one. It was champagnes and chocolate, conversation parties. It was derived around a previous book that I was in on, on forgiveness, but then we open it up, and we let people ask questions about whatever it is that you want to ask, and I serve as an expert on career and business. So it's just so many things that I have lined up, and then in April, I am going to be a speaker, and it's going to focus on career, basically time management and understanding how I went from a GS to a GS-15 in less than less than 15 years mm-hmm. because I was able to understand the process. So I want to teach people and have them to understand about their career. And that's my, well, I dipped a little bit beyond my first quarter, um, but my first quarter is set. I'm ready to go for that. And I'm building into the remainder of the year. So I'm so excited about what 2018 is going to bring, not only for me, but what I'm going to be able to share. And this book, Women Inspiring Nations, oh, my goodness. Every time I read my chapter, I read my chapter in preparation for this call, and I inspired myself. I inspired myself. Mm, I love it. I I love it. If you will, please, you know, we would love to um, end our conversations, and I want to thank you once again for coming in and sharing your amazing journey. We love to end our conversations either with some tips and advice or maybe some inspiring words that we may not have mentioned into tonight's conversation. Yes, absolutely. So I'll take a small excerpt from the book, and it is my takeaway that I list in the book, and it is, It is imperative that you begin with the right ingredients to obtain a successful outcome through being determined, obedient, intentional, and transparent. So that's my D, my O, my I, and my T. But by all of these things, that's how I was able to be successful. They were all essential components to my process. So to the audience and my message to the readers of my chapter, dream big and be intentional. Allow Mm -hmm. yourself to embrace every encounter, every person, every season, and every everything, every everything. Wow. I love it. I love it. And if you will, 
please, the dream. Share with the ladies in the rounds and source nation how we can get more information about you and continue to support you in your efforts. Yes, so do it is my brand. My website is www.doitdelivers.com, and there are hyphens in between. My Instagram handle, do it delivers, with hyphens in between. <laughs> and my <laughs> Facebook page is Ladrine Peterson and Ladrine Howard Peterson, and it will direct you to my Delivering on Ideas page. Awesome. Well, Ladrine, again, thank you so much for coming in to the lounge and definitely giving us some wonderful and great information um, in reference to your journey. We definitely look forward to speaking with you again and hearing more great things from you. Thank you. It has been truly my pleasure. Thank you so much. Have a great evening. Thank you. You too. Awesome. Well, well, so it's nice you heard it right there from Miss LaDreen Peterson. Tonight's conversation was an amazing one. What I love most about LaDreen is the fact that, you know, she talked about dreams, that these are the, the things that we, we've always wanted to do, had a passion for, and for whatever reason, maybe life has gotten in the way. But guess what? We still have time. We still have time to do those things, whether you are a mother or or still working in corporate America, don't let go of what it is that you truly want to do. I believe that God has given us all special gifts, and those gifts are to be shared. And if we don't do it, you know, hey, we definitely will lose it. We really will. So don't be afraid to dream, and if you have a dream and you have not partaken on it, go ahead and do so because guess what? The world needs you. I love that information that LaDreen has shared with us. All of her information and more can be found on Kathy D. Source Radio Network, as well as our main station page, Source Radio Network. Again, I want to thank my wonderful guest in the first hour, Ms. Adrian Dawkins. And, of course, um, definitely go out and pick up the book, which is Women Inspiring Nations. They are doing some wonderful things in their cities and communities and definitely giving us the opportunity to hear some wonderful Stories being shared right here on the Ladies Lounge. Guys, you've been listening live here on the Ladies Lounge. I am your host, Kathy B. We'll be back here same time next week with more inspiring conversations and great guests. Have a great evening. Good night. Yo! Yeah.